Hey everyone, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Hi. And um, let's see. We got uh, almost, I think, 75, 80% already here. That's awesome. Yeah. I'd like to ask yeah. everybody in the beginning to um, turn yeah. their camera on just so I can get a before picture. And then if you're still here at the end, we're going to get a picture of everybody's paintings. <laughs> All right, so um, um, while we wait for the rest, yeah, um, let's make sure we have the supplies that we need. A uh, paper towel, that's gonna be handy. And then um, I have two cups of water here. Yeah? One's to rinse my brush and then the other to mix it with the fabric dye. Uh, the one that you're gonna use to mix with the fabric, fabric dye, preferably, um, you know, something that's easier for you to pour yeah, you know, into the uh, palette. I just use a <clears throat> recycled uh, egg carton here. Yeah? It allowed me to really mix a lot of dye colors. So even though yeah, you only have four fabric dye, I'm going to be guiding you to create rainbows of color from the four fabric dyes that you have. So the more space you have, to mix your dye colors, the better, yeah? And then paper towel, water, yeah, something extra cups to mix more dyes, that would be great. And nice to meet you in person, Kendall. You too, thank you for um, hosting this. I'm excited. Welcome, welcome. Uh, a little background huh? uh, while we uh, get a couple more to show up. Uh, I was born and raised in Malaysia. Um, I came here to the United States as international student, uh, University of Miami in 1994. Me too! And, uh, wait, 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 wait. Is it Noel? <laughs> who, who is that? Another, I love, yes, oh, go oh, you, Lisa. Uh -uh. I'm a hurricane Hi. myself, so. Yay. <laughs> so I've made Miami my home for the past 20 years. And I've been teaching batik all over South Florida. And I'm also an Airbnb experience host. So the space behind me here yeah, is where I teach an in-person class for my Airbnb guests. And then during the pandemic, we do a lot of uh, online uh, virtual team building, yeah? uh, Microsoft and, and uh, General Meal and your company. So, um, you know, it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to share, uh, you know, my batik culture with all of you. So, uh, you know, you receive in the package a fabric that's already pre-waxed, yeah? So the wax is done by hand, it's drip by drip. So I'm gonna change the camera to another camera so you can view you know, where the wax is melted, the tools that I use. So we're gonna talk about that maybe for a couple of minutes and then we go into the painting process. Sounds good? <laughs> All right, so let me change to the camera so you can see how I set it up here. Okay. All right here. I have two cameras. You're gonna look at the batik cam is the one where I do the painting. And then the other camera, Munira Reimer, is the one that you're gonna see, you see that, yeah? So what I have in this killer here is the wax. So the wax is a blend of uh, beeswax and a paraffin. So I use both ingredients for economic reason. Yeah, it makes it cheaper when we work with beeswax, when we add paraffin to it, but also to get a certain look when I teach batik classes, like say, I'm trying to get, you can see this piece here, the crackle. So the crackle in the batik yeah, is what, uh, uh, is the, the essence, is the look of batik. So the paraffin is what allow me to get that look easily. But of course, yeah, paraffin is cheaper. So when we add you know, equal amount of paraffin to the beeswax, it makes my cost much lower than, you know, uh, than just using beeswax alone. Um, now here is all the different tools from all over, at least four different countries. So when we talk about batik, we always probably think straight to Indonesia, 
or Malaysia or India or maybe some parts of Africa. But it's actually, it has been around for a long time, you know, since the first century. And in China, batik has been done over 5,000 years. So this is some tools that are connected to the roots of where batik come from. Yeah. So this is the Black Among Tribe uh, tool. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Just give me some feedback if there's some glaring or whatever. It's almost like a metal knife. Yeah. So I use this tool when I create like a straight line or a geometric pattern. And also when I do design like this. So this tool come very handy. And then these, these other tools here is something that um, more popular among other batik artists, yeah, because they are easy to find. And let me switch my light over here a little bit, you can see better. Yeah, it's way too much light over there. So this one here from Indonesia, this one is from Malaysia. They're cute, this one looks like a shoe. <laughs> and then the one property that it has that is similar is it has a bowl. So the bowl is what uh, allow me to scoop the wax and have about two minutes to do a small portion of the outline and then I have to scoop it again and then you know continue to do the outline again. So I'm going to demonstrate a little bit, okay? I have a little bit of an echo in my ear, Jonathan. Can we fix that? So Jonathan is here. Um, he's my partner and uh, if there's any technical issues, you know, from my end or if you know, on your side, um, uh, he'll be able to help us, I hope. Okay, um, hold on, I need to adjust something. Oops, meeting support number one, one second. Okay, I see you. All right. <clears throat> So I'm going to do a quick demo so you can see how the outline is done, yeah? Um, of course, every time I do this, everybody say, Munira, you make it look so easy. But of course, I've done thousands. It's a skill that I think the more you do it, the better you get, yeah? And uh, so basically, uh, hold on. Basically, I scoop the wax out of the skillet, yeah? Just like that. And you can see the wax is going to start to drip and drip and drip. So it's very hard to get it to be so flawless without any drop on the fabric. So, and then I kind of just rest it on the, on this, you know, paper towel here. And let's see, I want to add something, maybe just a little swirl here. I'm just going to freehand it. Yeah. And that's how the wax is applied onto the fabric. So basically, if I move my hand too fast, it's not good because the wax doesn't have enough time to permeate the fiber. So if you look in the back of your fabric, you're gonna see how the wax is not just sitting on top of the surface, the wax is actually permeating the fiber, creating a good resist. And that go back to the definition of what batik is, yeah? So let's go back to the definition of what batik is. So batik is a resist technique, it's an ancient art. Yeah, where we use the wax that you see just now to create design or pattern on a cloth in order for us to color it. So for example, we don't have the, the, you know, the outline of a star here. There's no way to capture a star shape on the fabric because the moment you apply the fabric dye, the dye is just going to spread so fast. And that's what you're going to experience when you paint with me later, okay? So um, the outline allows us to color the shape of the sun and the moon and the star, yeah? And uh, so what you can expect from this class is two different kinds of batik. And I'm gonna leave it up to you to choose which kind you want. And normally, you know, your choice depends on the lifestyle or how, how you wanna use this as a fabric or as a piece of cloth or as a piece of art, okay? I'm changing my camera back so you can see me here. Front camera. Okay. So in this piece here, this is what we call a traditional batik. So traditional batik is something that I'm very familiar with, surrounded with it from the moment I was born. Yeah, in Malaysia, traditional batik is something that we wear. It will be a top, it will be a sarong, a pario that we wear to the beach. So you can see a finished piece 
of a batik, traditional batik piece always have the white line. This is the wax outline that I have done for you. Okay, so in this particular piece here, the wax is removed by the boiling water method. So I'm going to be teaching you how to do all that. So by the end of this class, you'll have the knowledge on how to complete your piece you know, from painting to removing the wax and fixing the soda ash on the, on the piece. So yeah, this is one, one, one way to batik. And then there's another way. Okay, This one, as you see, the color is much more vibrant. right? So this is what I call a contemporary batik. So in a contemporary piece, rather than boiling the wax out of the fabric, we're just going to iron. So I'm going to show you too, yeah, how to um, uh, remove the wax by ironing the wax from the fabric. It gets absorbed in the paper towel and your piece will be ready to display. Yeah, it will be something like this. So I have that. Yeah, I removed the edge of the fabric and I mounted it. This, you could get this on Amazon, this piece here or Etsy. And then you can display your piece. Okay. All right. So. Uh, up to you how you want to do it but first let's go through the painting process and then along the way you'll be like oh this come out you know so beautiful I think I want to be able to wash this I want to be able to use this even as a handkerchief or a keepsake of memories from you know joint activity with the company so um, I'm going to be guiding you and showing you how to use the soda ash to get the pigment to bond permanently to the fiber and then you can boil the wax out of the fabric okay so now let me put all these pieces away uh, maybe i can show you one more example in this piece here you can see batik is so versatile you can do representational art where you don't see the white outline but this is like level 201 <laughs> or 301 but you can see how versatile it is to create design or images just like a fine art, yeah, even though it's so ancient, but you can create all these different images working from white to black being the last color in a sequence. All right, so I think everybody is excited to start now, right? Now, uh, while we're working with the fabric dye, this is an example that is painted by my Airbnb guests. So after they paint, I fix the soda ash. Yeah, I fix the soda ash on the fabric and then the colors stay permanent and then I boiled it and then they get a finished piece uh, mailed to them. So for you, you already have the piece. Now you have the soda ash in this packet. We're not going to worry about the soda ash yet. We're only going to be dealing with our fabric dye. While working with the fabric dye, I'd like for you to put aside your hoop because when we work with the fine powder, it can get everywhere. Okay, you will watch when you when you wipe the table surface later on, you see like all these tiny, tiny little pigment now of color. So, uh, you know, if you can put aside the hoop and then we're just going to get the color out of the bag. Yeah? You have four colors there, the lemon yellow, the turquoise is for like the blue shades, dragon fruit is the pink and then the fire red. I'm going to go ahead and use my egg carton here. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do first is just open each of the colors, yeah? You're going to put just a little bit uh, onto the palette. I'm going to say about one-sixth of the space that you have there, but you can adjust this. Think of it, what you have here is just the extra. If you want the color stronger, you have more to mix it, yeah? To create a darker color. But first, we're going to just create the uh, you know uh, one version of it uh, what i'm doing here is also hold on i think i want to get a white palette so you can see better uh, definitely better than the clear a pattern here so i'm going to start again i'm going to put the pink in here i just tap my finger and, and, and the back and that's how i kind of get the color out can see that i have that amount and i have about this amount so when you create the color palette, I want you to create lighter color, lighter shades of the same color. Does that make sense? I want you to create light shades and dark shades of the same color. Because when we start painting, this is what I'm trying to get you to do in terms of shading. We go from light shades to the dark shades, okay? So it's nice to have those color ready uh, to when you paint rather than 
looking for color, uh, water to dilute it. Let me change my view one second so you can see everybody. All right, so now I have that going on. I'm gonna open the fire red. I'm just quickly get that in here. Not a lot. And remember, you can adjust this as you go, okay? If you don't have, you know, you have plenty actually to finish the, the piece. So the goal in the class is you know, to relax and just um, escape for, for a moment. You know, it's very therapeutic when you can just focus on one task, you know, rather than getting distracted and bombarded by uh, social media, work, email, <laughs> a phone call. So uh, now I have all my color in here. Huh? So what I want to do next is just grab my container here. This is a small container, so it's easier for me to pour the water in each of this area. So if you're working with a large cup, you're gonna probably make a mess. So try use either, if you have a dropper, you can use a dropper, or maybe a spoon, or find a way to kind of make it easier for you to pour, you know, uh, water into the pallet area, okay? So we are just gonna work with water and dye powder in the beginning, okay? No soda ash needed. There you go. Now, put that over here. I send you two brushes. Yeah. Um, the flat one you can use for a bigger area. And of course, use the small brush for the small area. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do now is mixing the color, making sure that all the dye pigment you know, dissolve completely. So, now you can see I'm going to test the, the color here as I go. Yeah. And then now, this is something that is important when you work with fabric dye because you can contaminate all these other colors. If you take your yellow and you steal in the brush and then you dip that brush in the blue, you're going to end up with green. So before you dip your brush in any other color, please yeah, squeeze the dye just like this. So because we work with fabric dye, unlike acrylic or oil, the moment we do this, yeah, we just get rid of the first color, the yellow color. So now I can go into my blue without turning it green and then mix that. So this is my blue shades and the other one. Yeah, so try, try and create like this, light shades and then darker shades. And if you want it to be darker, add more dye powder to this because if this is too close together, might not be you know, ideal. So try and darken up that blue, okay? So that way you have two shades to work with of the same color. And again, watch what I did. Yeah. If I don't want to rinse my brush in the water here, yeah, I just squeeze that brush here in the paper towel and then move on. This is my red. Yeah. So take your time to get this color process done right. So then that way when you start painting, even though it's only 30 minutes or 45 minutes, you're good to go. <laughs> you know, the, the the thing is with your fabric dye while you are, you know. Painting is that dye pigment can get all over the place, so that can mess up your piece. Yeah. So my color here tend to be happen to be very close to each other. So I'm going to be adjusting that for sure to make sure that I can differentiate better between the light shades and the darker shades. That's the pink, and then this is the darker pink. I love working with this dragon fruit shades, and you can make a um, purple if you mix blue to it, right? And you can make raspberry if you mix it with blue, but add more pink to it. It's all in the ratio of the, yeah, the pink color and the blue that you add together. So now we're gonna have a little bit of fun if you're ready, okay? Now uh, here, you can see in this piece here, how easy it is. My piece already has a boo-boo. Look, I splashed a little pink to it. And this is the reason why it's good to put it away while we get the color ready, okay? So now I want to create purple. Yeah? Purple might be nice because the, the moon can be more purplish like this. See here, it's like a little purple, a little bluish, make it pop. So I'm gonna take a little bit, just using my brush here, I'm gonna dip and carry over a little bit of the pink and clean my brush, of course. Yeah? And then 
add a little bit of the blue, stir, and it's kind of like experimenting now. Voila, I have a very deep purple there. So now from here, let's create lighter shades of that purple. Now, so when I paint, there you go. Yeah, so I have a light shade and darker shade. So the important part is do this. Yeah, clean your brush before you dip into all the other colors. So that way your color remain, yeah, not contaminated, remain as a primary color rather than turning brown as you go. Now I want to make green. Green, you're not sure if you're going to be using a lot of green on this piece, yeah, because we don't have leaves or, but it may be something to accent like the, the spiral or whatever that come later. So let's take a little bit of blue. So same color theory, and the point is same color theory apply even though we're working with fabric dye. So this type of fabric dye is called fiber reactive Procyon MX dye. It is the safest to work for home crafters, which means after we're done painting, your, your, you, you know, your piece is complete, you can just rinse everything in the sink and it is safe, okay? And as far as the effect on the environment, yeah, it's, it's FDA approved. It is the safest for home crafters to use at home, okay? So uh, that is green. Now, uh, most likely we're gonna be using a lot of yellow, deep orange and red. We're gonna turn the sun and make it really pop, yeah? Like this, for example, okay? So let's make a little bit of brown. So now I have green, but now I'm not gonna use green because I wanna use more, I wanna work more on, on you know, deepening that color for the sun with you guys. So using my base green, I'm gonna make a little brown. How do I make brown from green? I'm gonna add a little red to it, okay? I'm gonna add a little red. The brown is not gonna be that pretty in the beginning, but it's okay. I can adjust it to how I want it as I go. So you see the shades of brown there? Yeah, kind of murky, almost like coffee with not enough milk in it. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take that brown, go back to my lighter shades of, um, of yellow here. I make like a tan color. So this tan color, I can use it in the face of the sun if I want to. So this is kind of like a good, you know, step to create the, the palette that I needed for, to, to transform this white fabric. Okay, so I think I'm ready with my colors and how are you guys doing? I think some of you are still mixing the colors. So as you keep experimenting and keep uh, creating the colors and the shades that you want, if you have any question, if you have any color that you wanna make and not quite sure, just ask, okay? Very easy. And um, I wanna make sure that I have enough paper towel will also help me share with Can you. Can you repeat again which are the colors that you have created? Mm, okay, so I have the pink, the red, the yellow, the blue, okay? So those are the four colors. And then from the blue, I mix it with the pink to create the purple, yeah? Uh, so this is my blue. This is my pink. This is the purple. Okay. So how do I get the purple? Take the pink, mix it with the blue. Okay. Over here, I have the shades that I want, which is more brownish, tan color for the sun. Uh, first, I created the green. It was green here before. I don't know if you remember. So I just take the blue, mix it with mm -hmm. the yellow, make the green. And then I take a little bit of red, add to the green. Yeah. So basically, you get shades like that, much darker. Yeah, darker brown, and then this is like the tan color. So I may have to adjust this a little bit because I think my tan color is looking very lime green-ish, which I, may, I don't like that very much. So we're going to adjust as we go. How's that? Okay. <laughs> yeah, feel free to ask me if you have any question on the color, and then we can start. I'm going to start with transforming this area here uh, for the sun. 
Okay. Um, you can start anywhere. You can start from the star first, probably. Yeah, that's probably easier. And then we're going to work towards, um, I'm going to work on this side here and then go toward the right. So normally when I paint, I can just turn my hoop around, yeah, to keep the wet area to dry up so that way I don't have to, you know, I don't end up smudging the dye. So I'm going to start with the lighter color. Make sure my brush is very clean first. And then I'm going to start with the yellow at the tip of the beautiful sun here. <laughs> is this light yellow you are using or the dark yellow? I'm using the, the, the primary, primary yeah. okay. uh, yellow, yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And remember, you have those extra colors in here. Yeah. If suddenly your yellow is turning greenish, or I don't know, <laughs> grayish, brownish, uh, you have extra dye to make the color that you want. Uh, how do you clean your brush? Well, I have two cups of water initially, yeah? So one cup is for me to, to, to use to pour water in the palette, the other cup is to rinse my brush by and not using <laughs> just one, you know, a cup here for, for both, so. So now I have yellow here already here, and then I want to make like a little bit of orange shades. You see that? I did not make orange, but I just add a little bit of the dragon fruit right where, I'm gonna start over again. I take the yellow, instead of painting the entire area, I paint just about a third. So the planning when we paint with dye is important. You want to transform the area, make sure that the color get in and get absorbed properly. So the color will get absorbed better and will look better as the finished piece if you apply, if you plan ahead of time. So the planning is we're going to do yellow, a third of that, and then maybe turn that yellow into golden orange by adding a little bit of pink. And then we're going to add some red, and then we're going to start to do the blending. So it's like a third pink, a third golden yellow, a third something darker to make it pop, yeah? So that's what I started here. So I have yellow already here, and then I add the dragon fruit. Now the dragon fruit is like gone. All you see is golden yellow and orange from the interaction of the yellow and the pink together. And I have a teeny bit of pink over here, yeah? So I wanna keep this, golden yellow as is, and then I'm gonna take my red, I'm gonna put it right there, and then just continue to blend a little bit. So when you do the blending with your brush, try and do like a smaller motion in a circular pattern like this, rather than this, yeah? So when we paint with acrylic, we focus more on like the stroke to create the texture or whatever. But when we are working with fabric dye, in a small area like this, we need a way to control how much the dye spread. So in order not to go outside the line, you just dip, you dab. Yeah, you can dab right in the center of the line, in between the line. You don't have to go right on the line because that's how you're going to get the color to bleed out. And then you can add a little bit of the pink shade next to it and slowly transform that area to be looking like that. Okay, now I'm gonna go into this one next. And of course you can use any color you want. It doesn't have to be, you know, the whole idea is to have fun, you know, express yourself with color and just, uh, you know, enjoy the activity. So, so now I don't know if you see what I did there. I add a little bit of the brown to the red and I really deepen it, give it more dimension. Yeah, so the contrast between the light and the dark area is what's gonna make the image pop. So for example, here, you know, when I start painting these flowers here, I start off with very light pink, and then I bring in, you know, more like medium dark, dark uh, uh, medium uh, saturation, and then I add a little bit of red. So that's how, how you see those uh, shading being done. You wanna create like the gradient. So basically, work from the light color to the dark color, yeah? And then you're gonna do the blending. 
when you do the blending, you can use water to do the blending or you can use the light color. Does that make sense? You cannot do the blending with the dark color because then the light area is going to keep disappearing. We don't have white. So we want to keep the contrast, keep the area light by using water to do the blending or use the light color that you've used in the beginning. This is a kind of like, um, I'm, I describe this as a delicate process. Yeah. Uh, typically, the more, the slower you go, the better the result that you get. Uh, there's no need to rush. Yeah? Um, whatever we finish, you know, after the session end, we finish. We, we, you know, we, we, we can stop there, but yeah, you still have the dye. You still have, you know, make the time for it, maybe on the weekend to finish it on, you know, on your own, in your own time. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah? So, Sometimes when we rush to finish that, uh, we take away that, therapeutic value which is sitting down you know enjoying a little me time for yourself <laughs> so we will try we will try to finish but if not it's okay so i kind of like just dip my brush yeah but i make sure that every time i dip my brush in the dye i get a good amount that's one way to speed up a little bit yeah, so don't just take a little bit because like, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to ruin this piece. You, know, you can dab it a bit, get a good amount of dye in the brush. Hmm? So that way, when you when you paint, you have not only the saturation, you have a good amount of dye to work with for the area. So while we paint, if you want to socialize, do it. If you anybody know each other. You know, um, uh, this is your 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 space. <laughs> so, are you guys all working from home? From home, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. I'm definitely finding out that I'm not good at coloring in the lines. I'm with you. Yeah, same. Same here. <laughs> I have a lot of yellow on the outside edges, especially where the tips are. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So so one point for me, when you when you go toward the tip, you don't have to go all the way. Just kind of like go like just just right here. Let's see, I'm gonna start again. This is my yellow. I'm gonna go right here. So I just put right there. See? So I just dab right there. So what's gonna happen is the dye, the moment you hit the fabric, it's gonna start to spread. It's gonna start to travel. And then it's gonna hit like the wall, it's gonna hit the wax outline and it will stop. So without you having to go so close to the line, you can just, you know, start somewhere right before it, the line get very, you know, uh, tiny and then, um, you know, and add the dye right there. Okay. okay. It's all, it is very in the beginning, I think because it's a new medium, it may feel a little bit like, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing, or, you know, it may be a little intimidating, but uh, I think you'll get it once you start, you know, painting a few of the, uh, the area, and be like, yeah, I think I get this. <laughs> I do <laughs> then a lot you of, can enjoy it. I do a what? lot of paint nights, and oh, I've, yeah? I've learned to ignore the mistakes in the beginning, because in the end, sometimes they turn out right anyway. Exactly, yep. See, even if I have a color that came out a little bit early here, let it go. That's one of the things that I keep telling people. See, because sometimes, uh, you know, I have a group or, or somebody that just, they froze the moment they make, you know, it's not perfect. <laughs> the moment it's not perfect, they're like, oh, man, you know. So um, that's the therapy think, part. That's the therapy mm -hmm. part for me. I do a lot of that. Particularly things like this, where I'm not good at make, making mistakes and then keep going. I want to tear the whole thing apart and start over again. <laughs> so <laughs> it is quite therapeutic to learn to just go with the flow. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I just tell people just take a deep breath, let it go, let it go, yeah, and just enjoy. And then sometimes we can use a darker color 
just like when we put makeup on with any blemish that we want, we conceal it. So we conceal the boo boo with a darker color. So, you know, move on. <laughs> So Monira, this is Venencia. So two of the Hi. participants in this class will receive two Batik kits each. So before the end of class, can you please pick two names from the participants to, to get those two kits? Yeah. I have to pick the name. <laughs> mm -hmm. No pressure. Oh <laughs> <laughs> do that that definitely means pressure, Venencia, right? <laughs> And I'm also wondering why there are no guys in our class. Terrible. Let me your sign up. Okay, I'm gonna keep my mouth closed, Valencia. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the initial, my first initial. Uh, Mayank. Mayank. Mayank is no longer. No longer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay, all right, okay, okay. We'll start again. We'll start over. <laughs> Ooh, I have Ida, that's now. looking really nice. Yeah. Uh, Ida, wow, yes, yeah. look at you guys. I got it. Okay, I'm doing it. I got it. Oh, wow. <laughs> you guys are faster than me. <laughs> How about Sonia? Is Sonia, is Sonia here with us? Sonia? Yeah. No. Not, not no. All right. I'm not, this is not a good day for me <laughs> to play with this. <laughs> well, two in a row. All right. Jonathan. Jonathan picked the name. Jonathan. Yes, pick the name. Jonathan picked two names. <laughs> yes. Yeah. From the up. list of of whoever is here. No, I did not give up, but I feel like I don't even know who's here, who's not here. So I'm looking at my attendant list here, right? I, I'm looking at the attendant list. So I, I'm not looking at like the whole actual screen here. So I, I can't see everybody. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, okay. Uh, you pick, Jonathan. They're gonna receive two two kids. Yes. Yes, randomly. Oh, we could put like one of those app. Let's put it in the app. <laughs> we give something Jonathan something to do while we pay it, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. I think I'm done. Oh, wow. What? Oh, nice. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't cheat, Sweeta? You didn't no, start I did. first? I, I tried my best. <laughs> I performed better under pressure. And Valencia seems... Oh, my God. Uh -huh. <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> tells me something, Sweeta. It tells me something. <laughs> yeah. How did you get oh, the white God. line in the middle? You just went around it? Which, oh yeah, it was the wax, right? That's the, yeah, wax. the wax. We yeah. got the, the design like, like that. Yeah, yes, yeah. Mine, See, mine has, mine mine has that. simplified. Yeah, yeah some of them has that. that. So because it is handmade, no one, no, none of you will have exactly the same piece. Sometimes so, you, know, you, you, huh? you drew all of this ahead of time for us. Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've done quite a it's lot of these. It's super neat to different. see how the wax it's super easy to see how the wax just resists. It's like, you know, the line tells you. It's neat. So each one is yeah. unique then? Yep. Yeah. Yes, correct. And Anita, why are you not home. doing it? By the because way? I'm watching all of y'all, making sure y'all are working. How about that? She's <laughs> <laughs> keeping us on pressure now. <laughs> she is watching. That's <laughs> I was, right. I was watching you watching us. <laughs> Okay, Jonathan has the two names. This is picked randomly in an app, okay? Shweta. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Valencia. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. I, I, I withdraw. I withdraw. <laughs> Jonathan, you have, you have to go for another one. <laughs> I'm almost done. 
it's on almost done. Oh, this looks so good, you know. Oh, very nice. Uh, very pretty. Thank you, thank you. Ah, uh, you guys are good. How to, how to like, it's, it's sometimes uh, the color is more on the brush, it comes out. Like, what, what do we do then? Do we use it on the side? Out. It spreads Say out. It the it, color? Yeah, on this, it just spreads out easily. So what should we do? Ah, that one. Okay, so nine. tips, tips from, from the artist and what to do when you have a boo-boo. All right. Now, you can do this as, a, as something that if you want to, yeah, that way, there's a way to make it perfect. Here's a little secret. In here, I had a little bleach mixed with water, okay? Bleach will reverse the dyeing process, okay? So, um, let's say here, I have a little boo-boo, look, yeah? I add a little bleach right there, just the area, Okay? So you want to do this carefully. You want to do this carefully because you don't want to have to repaint everything again. So you're going to use just a little bit. Yeah? If you have uh, just regular bleach at home, Clorox, yeah? uh, just add it with a little bit of water so it's not too strong. You can, you can use a full strength if you want to, but just a little bit. And you can let it sit. You can watch how this area here is going to fade out slowly. So now... What you're going to do is, because it is bleach, yeah, you have to add a little bit of water to neutralize the area. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that you have, to, you have to neutralize the area with some water, adding to it, so that way it can accept the color again. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit here, and then, and then you're going to see how the color will fade out a little bit. Okay, so that way, whatever color you put on, you know, it will not mess it up. Let's say if you have yellow bleeding out and then you want a blue background, that yellow spot is going to turn green. So, you know, if you take the step to, um, you know, bleach that yellow out a little bit before you work on the background color, you will get a better result. You can do that as an option, yeah? But if you like a little, you know, character in the background, that's fine, yeah? It's yeah, so an option. Okay, get back to the painting. Jonathan uh, said the winner, the winners are Shweta and Lisa. Hi. Which app do you use, Jonathan? Google. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now the kids is something that you already receive or, or we have to ship, Vanessa? I'm probably going to order, order it and have you ship it out. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, that's a clarifying now. I don't know how Shweta moves so fast. Mine is not as pretty as yours. <laughs> all right so i'm going to move on from this section here i'm going to go into the moon area okay so that way so whoever is ready to paint the next stage of the next area oh, yeah, we, we can work together Have I been <laughs> you can start anywhere oh wow but, you know it's nice lisa hey. there you go she already she, she already got the moon cut done <laughs> my, my moon's got a lot of lipstick on I gotta tell you. Yeah. A lot of lipstick. <laughs> All right, so done with the sun. Let's go on to the moon. Okay. Wow, I go through a lot of paper towel when I paint. <laughs> So with the moon, I want to start with a very light blue and I'm going to work with a little bit of purple. So I'm going to take whatever color shades light blue that I have actually just adding more water into it. So 
this is going to be the first shades of blue that I use. Very light. And then I want it to be very much lighter. Yeah. If I want to make it darker, I can later on. It's much easier to darken light color rather than trying to reverse light darker color and make it lighter. So. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the purple shades right here. And then clean my brush and then blend where the purple color mixed with the blue a little bit. So this will kind of get that look. And then I keep blending it with my light blue color slowly. If I want to, I can add a little bit of pink shades here right in the cheek. <laughs> okay. yeah, I think my laptop connection keep going in and out, but you will still, you can still hear me from the uh, camera above my uh, art piece here so it is i can see it says connecting and that happened yeah. i'm going to move on into this area yeah i see my laptop camera screen froze jonathan mm -hmm. Any question? Everybody doing good? Everybody in the zone? Now, if I want to some area to remain light. I just take the paper towel, wrap it around my finger here. Yeah, you see that is the the face of the moon that I was working on. I darken out some area. I do some blending right in the middle. Now I want to lighten it up even more. So I take paper towel and I just dab away the dye. And that's what you can do. Yeah, you can dab away. So that way the area can remain light because the more the fabric dye sit on top of the fabric just you know you were going to get soap in so it may get darker so to keep an area light all you have to do is just just dab away if, if the color is too much in the area Sometimes you can transform the area slowly and then just by, you know, changing or editing the color as you go. So you never really know how you want to finish it, but it will come. <laughs> For me, I just kind of go with the flow when I paint, so. Add a little bit of brown in the eyes and then brown in the eyebrow right there, okay? Now this area here, I'm going to show you on the piece that you know uh, my client painted here. This here, yeah, um, is part of the sun. Yeah? This part here, one, two. Okay. You may want to transform that with you know adding same color that you did with the sun. Okay, um, Jonathan, 
Can you keep an eye on time for me? Okay. I need a um, like a 20 minute mark or 15 minute mark before we finish to do the uh, soda ash and then to do the wax removal process. Um, Kendall? Yes, ma'am. We are ending at one o'clock. Is that right? That's the, the time we have set, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. The Nancy would right. really have to say if it can go over that. Okay, all right. Teresa, will you be painting later? Yes? Me? <laughs> Teresa, oh. Teresa, yes, Are you, will you be painting later? We cannot hear you, you can unmute if you want. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of watching everyone because I, uh -huh. I, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm watching okay. what you're doing and then I'll take mm -hmm. my time and do mine later. Okay, that's a good yeah. plan. At least you kind of get the idea or get inspired by some of, you know, uh, <laughs> by, by the work that you see today. So. Yeah, I'm just kind of yeah. watching what you're doing and then I'll be able to to try to do it's more. fun to do when you you know have the the, the weekend and then yeah. you can just sit down you know with your coffee yeah. or your favorite beverage and just chill <laughs> you could netflix in the kit for <laughs> and then see an idea for next time yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's gone idea for next time wine and uh, wine and art what's that wine and art Idea Wine and art. Yep. I have to do it in the afternoon, in the yep. end of the day. In the end of the day, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we are we are trying to plan some outings. Maybe we'll have one of those. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, so where, where yeah. Oh wow, you went so fast. How did you go? Yeah, my, my laptop uh, screen is frozen right now, so but it's connecting. Oh my cool. god, that is so pretty. Can you show yours closer so I can see what you're doing with the moon? Yes, oh, yes, Kendra. One second. I almost finished with the top part, so I'm just gonna blend a little bit. Okay, so here's what I did. I start off with a super light blue. Basically, I take the light shades, shades of blue. I even lighten up it even more. So I add a light blue and then I add a little bit of the, the purple that I have. But then sometimes when the light, when the you know blue and the purple mix together, together, I need to add a little bit of pink to it to make it even more vibrant. So like here, see if I add a little pink to the to the area, yeah, mm -hmm. it looks a little bit I, more. I totally started out with this. <laughs> <laughs> I totally started with dark blue and did the opposite. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So the light blue is a good color to start because it's a base for us to turn it into purple or keep the area blue if we want to. So mm. as long as we have that base going on, we can keep adjusting the shades. And then over here, yeah, if you add um, you know, the 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 purple color, and then it's much easier to blend it with the blue. And you're going to see that kind of gradient going on. Hmm. And then you can keep darkening it to however you want, you know, as long as you have the base down. And um, that's what sometimes I do. Um, 
you know, you can have your piece just sitting around and drying and then you're like, oh, I think I want to be darken it up a little bit. Because what happened is when we work on fabric, it always look darker when it's wet. And then when it's dry, yeah, you can see that it's much lighter. So, you know, consider whatever we work on today is like the first layer and then you can always yeah, darken it up as you go. And that's what I'm doing here and just playing and add, adding, you know, um, to darken it up slowly. And then again, if I feel like the color in a certain area is too dark, I want to control that a little bit. So I just use paper towel, wrap it around my finger like this. We could use Q-tip, yeah? And just dab the color away so that way certain area that I want to keep light can remain light. And then here, over here, yeah, it is uh, something that you can add whatever color that you want to it. So I'm going to take a little bit like a sea foam color to this part here. Okay. And I'm going to just go keep it simple with the blue shade. So sea foam is the color that you can get by mixing light blue and light green together. Light blue and light green. Light green together, yeah. So first create the, the green shades and then dilute it, make it very light. And then make the, take any of the blue color that you have here, create a very light color and then mix the two. One of my favorite colors to, to use for background because it's very neutral. It doesn't compete with all the other colors here yeah, that I that I use. So now work on the lips and then the other lip. Now the star, the star, I want to use color that are, oh, over here too. So over here, you can see over here underneath here, yeah? You can actually extend the same color tone that you're using here, yeah? The purple and the blue all the way under here as well. Let me do that. Oh. It's like the moon has like two, two, two faces, like the first one at the top and then the bottom. <laughs> so again, I'm going to start with the very light shade going on here. I'm going to add a little bit of the sea foam, whatever color that is. Because sometimes I just, I just, you know, just let it flow. I didn't overthink too much. <laughs> All right, now here, I'm gonna move on to the star here. I need to make pure yellow because my yellow is turning greenish right now. So, okay. Now, even I'm going to use yellow as the base, and then I'm going to change it as I kind of make it more orangish. So, but I want my yellow to be thicker rather than too dilute because the area in the star is very small. So, I just this is what I did. This is the first attempt, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's too much water. So, what I did is create a much thicker paste, yeah and get a much brighter yellow that I want. Less water, yeah, just a little bit, because I don't want that color to spread out too much, too fast. It's such a small area here, so I just want to dab, darken it up. Of 
of course, for this area, use the small brush. Yeah? Use the small brush for this. So now you are going to let your piece dry completely. Yeah, before you attempt to remove the wax or before you apply the soda ash onto the fabric. So I'm going to finish the star here and then I'm going to show you what to do with the soda ash. So for this star here, I want to add a little bit of orange shades a little bit. So I'm going to use red instead of pink. And I just want to put a little that a little bit. And then I'm going to take my yellow and then just blend it together. Try and bring it closer. What does the soda ash do? Uh, Vanessa, great question. So the soda ash is sodium carbonate. So sodium carbonate is a chemical that highly alkaline. But what it does is going to activate the pigment that we're adding now. When we paint, yeah, what we're doing is transforming the white cotton fabric uh, with dye colors. Yeah, dye colors, the, 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 the powder, the pigment, uh, need a chemical reaction to happen to bond to the cellulose in the cotton. So that's what the function of soda ash is. It is very, very uh, critical or you know, essential in the process of bati. It doesn't matter where it is. Yeah, in the world, uh, soda ash is necessary. Um, let me show you what it looks like. In, um, let's see if I have the box. I don't have the box. But it basically, it is a washing soda. And, but I'd like to show you how alkaline it is. So you can see uh, what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> basically what it does it is you know, activate this dye pigment. And right now, what we're doing, this is just dye pigment that we mix with water. Okay, we add it to the fabric. But unless we fix it, unless we make this dye powder bond to the, to the fiber, you know, if you wash it or if there's water that get on the fabric, that dye color is going to get affected. Okay, so now I'm going to take my soda ash. Okay, if you decided that you want to create a washable piece, right? A washable piece is a piece that you can wear. You can not worry about the color fading out or leaving the fabric. No, you're going to use the soda ash. Yeah, traditional batik piece is created with this. Okay, so I'm going to take um, the whole packet. I'm going to grab some water. How much water do we need to mix it with the one packet of the soda ash? You're going to need about a quarter cup of water. Maybe you can write it somewhere. Yeah, maybe you can write it in the back. Or you know, maybe I should do that. I should write a little bit and like, you know, mix with a quarter cup of, of, of water. So that way, yeah, uh, later on in the future, if you decided that, hey, I want to fix the you know the, the 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 dye on this fabric so that's what you do okay so this is about a quarter cup of water in this little jar here i'm going to dissolve the entire bag it's a lot it's going to be highly concentrate highly alkaline solution here basically the ph level of this solution here is somewhere about 13 or 14. so if you have a sensitive skin yeah, uh, try wear gloves when you do this part because it can, yeah, it can, um, not very friendly to, to skin, yeah? skin if you have skin, skin issues like mine. I have mine, I'm very sensitive <laughs> to, uh, you know, um, soda ash sometimes. So if I have to do like a dye bath, well, of course, yeah, I have to wear the glove for it. So, what you're going to do is after it dissolves completely. Use the brush, then you're going to apply the soda ash area per area. It's like repainting it again, but instead of with dye, 
with the soda ash in each area. Okay, so you don't want to do this like just apply it or dip the whole fabric because we have to keep the color in the area. You don't want to smudge the color. Yeah, so that's what you do. Okay, this is something that you can do if you decided to, yeah. Make it like a, a washable traditional piece. It's very easy. You have the soda ash. Yeah, you're gonna empty the whole bag. You're gonna mix it with a quarter cup of water. You're gonna stir it vigorously to dissolve the soda ash powder completely. So you're gonna create a soda ash solution. Yeah? A highly alkaline solution that you can use or you must use to fix the dye area per area. Yeah, repainting the area per area so that the dye can bond permanently to the fiber. And then you're gonna let the piece that you have fixed with the soda ash dry completely, okay? okay? So it has to dry completely before you can remove the wax by boiling water. So if you got to the stage where you are using soda ash to fix the color, you must. You, it's like one way or the other, does that make sense? Yeah? If you apply soda ash in the fabric, you know, you, you, you intentionally want to create a washable piece, you have to boil the, the, the wax out of the fabric. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to have something like this. I'm going to show you an example. This is what I'm going to demo, how to remove the wax shortly. This piece has already has the soda ash applied to it. Area per area, look, the color stay. The color does not smudge because you do it one area at a time of like repainting it again, except with the soda ash solution. But I want you to keep an eye in this area here. This is the, the I know one of the examples of what happened when the soda ash precipitates. When the soda ash precipitate, it will leave like a little powder, like almost like a salt powder on the surface of the fabric. So this is the reason why if you choose to use the soda ash to fix the dye onto the fabric, to create a washable piece, you must boil the fabric. Yeah, otherwise this piece here is not pretty to display. Yeah, because it has that remnants of just the ash in it. So it goes back to the charts on the reference material that you receive, either one way or the other. Either you create a piece that you are going to iron the wax off the fabric and be contemporary. No water can get near it. You cannot wash it only to display as an art, or you can create a fabric that you can use and washable and the color will stay on permanently. Yeah. So if that's the way you want to go, use the soda ash and then boil. Use the soda ash, let it dry. Don't be bothered if they are if you see the white powder. That's normal. This is a completely normal look after the soda ash is applied onto the fabric and it has dried up. Okay, so now I'm going to make a little bit of a, um, a little area here for me to show you how to remove the wax. So keep painting, yeah, keep painting. I'm going to clear up the dye a little bit. And the connection on my laptop today is very bad, um, but I'm glad you can still hear me from my other camera there. So... Um, I don't use ironing board. Yeah, everything is done on this you know, table here. So I'm going to use this piece of batik fabric from India. Yeah, this fabric like this is done not by hand, but it is still batik. It is done using a stamp. So I may have two minutes to talk about batik stamp with you. Sometimes it's fun to also learn hmm, what are the ways to batik, you know. I'm not sure from your travel, even your culture, yeah, uh, you may have come across batik pieces that are done with a copper hand stamp or a wood hand stamp. So um, I'm trying to see where I am. You can see me yeah, on the other, um, my laptop is freezing right now. So this is a copper stamp. Yeah, um, pretty. They're like so tiny. And imagine how um, in the time that we spend to paint these handkerchiefs together, which is, you know, one hour, 90 minutes. Yeah? And uh, in that amount of time, I can create large fabric and commercialize it. If I go the other route where I use the stamp, 
to create the wax pattern rather than hand drawing it, hand painting it. Yeah. So this is another way for artisan. Yeah. In Malaysia, Indonesia, India, this is how we produce batik on a commercial level. Yeah. So use hand stamp to create that kind of look. So this is example of pieces that are done with a wood hand stamp from India. Yeah. So I've been able to travel quite a bit to learn batik from all over. So Northern Vietnam, Africa, all over Indonesia, Malaysia. Uh, now, this is the piece that I'm going to boil. This is the piece that I am going to iron, okay? Um, now, in the ironing process, you need iron, of course, <laughs> number one, but um, you have to make sure that the, the uh, steamer feature is off completely, okay? So I'm going to just turn it on. I'm using one of this super old iron. I can even hear the heating element when it starts to heat up. That's how old it is. It has no um, steamer feature, but yeah, uh, if you use one at home so to do the ironing process, make sure the steamer feature is turned off completely. You don't want any moisture or water yeah, going on your uh, batik piece. So what I do here is putting my finished piece that I painted here. I did not have a background color on this. I may want to. Hold on, let's see if I have another piece. Um, yeah, I think I want to change my mind. I want to change to a different piece now because I realized that oh, it would be nice to have a background color on this. All right, it will make the tiger pop even more. Here's another piece that I have not ironed yet. I'm going to put it in between two layers of paper towel. Yeah, I can hear my iron is like cracking right now. <laughs> It's like grandma's iron. <laughs> so when you do a sandwich that by thick piece, yeah? This is dried already. It has no soda ash because this is going to be a contemporary piece and this is why we are ironing it. Okay, so you're going to take it and just do like this. So the heat from the iron is going to melt the wax and the wax will get absorbed by the paper towel. You're going to get almost like the, the design of your batik piece on the paper towel itself and that's you know when you see that happen you see that okay wax is melting oh wax is getting absorbed you know by the paper on the top as well as on the bottom of this batik piece so you don't need to do even you need to do a lot because the design is very simple so you can see some of the wax here huh? on this paper towel here so now what i like to do next before I finish it off, or before I display it, go over again. Render, or one more time, right on top of the fabric. I set the temperature to about cotton. Linen might be too hot, yeah? So just cotton. Go over again like this. Okay, kind of like burn off some of that paraffin off from the, uh, the wax outline. So that's it, okay? Now the wax is removed, so your fabric or your piece is going to feel more like slightly like a parchment paper a little bit. Why? Because as we melt the wax, the wax gets absorbed in the paper, but it also spread along the, you know, or over the fabric as well. So uh, it feels just a little bit stiffer than the other method, which is the traditional batik. And I'm going to show you next. Very easy, right? <laughs> but yeah, whatever you do, make sure your basic piece is completely dry. So now, moving on to this one. The soda ash has been applied. The soda ash has dried. There's all this white yeah, powder looking on top of this fabric. So you're going to remove the fabric from the hook. You can recycle this again if you want to. You, know, you can remove the edge and get one of those fancy stand that I have here, you know, and you can have, you can display, you know, your, your, your work if you want to. It's like, uh, I think I spent $6 or something to, to get the little cute, uh, they called it the embroidery hoop stand. So 
in this piece here, you see the edge is not done. Yeah. If you want to, you can. It's a little bit tricky to paint the edge area. You almost have to wait for the center to dry first. And then you probably have to create something like put it using a paper plate, for example. Yeah. Put it over the paper plate to, to increase the center so you can paint the edge of the fabric. Does that make sense? You, can, you cannot paint the edge if the fabric is still in the hoop. You mm -hmm. cannot paint the edge if the fabric is flat because the color can sit back in. You know, the color from the edge can sit back in. So how do we proceed yeah, with coloring the edge is I usually, that's okay, imagine, let's imagine this is our paper plate. The paper plate have about the same circumference or diameter as this. So put it, the fabric over. Now we create a little bit of an edge and then you just take the dye color and then you can start paint around it. Keep it still on one spot while you finished it, yeah? And then if it's dry, then you can, you know, iron or um, if you are uh, creating a washable piece, make sure that the dye that you use for the background color has soda ash in it. Does that make sense? Yeah? It's a bit more complicated, basically. But you can do it if you want to. It's just a matter of technical to get the, the you know, fabric piece, um, uh, you know, not messed up in the process. All right, so I'm going to bring a uh, boiling water. I'm going to use two buckets. Coming up next. Hot? Okay. I just grab a little bit of detergent, yeah, um, to add to the water. The detergent actually help, um, you know, expel the wax from the fabric, as well as any fabric dye that does not bond successfully, but they should, yeah. So you'll see, you'll see when I, when I wash this fabric, okay. So in here is there's two bucket here. Uh. Yes, you can bring it over. Okay, so Jonathan is going to put the boiling water in the first bucket. There's two buckets here. One, two. It's going to steam up a teeny bit. So let's put it over here. And then I'll bring it to the camera shortly. Okay. That's it. That's a lot. Okay. <laughs> this is like magician <laughs> doing, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> so it's steaming out right now. <laughs> so here's the boiling water. Yeah. And um, if you have a stick, a chopstick, a wood piece, you can use it to agitate a little bit. Yeah. To, to, to get the wax to leave the fabric. Here's the finished piece. Adding a little bit of detergent right into the hot boiling water. Okay, and then here is the piece. Submerge it completely while doing so. Agitate it. I'm using all my kitchen utensils from the dollar store. Yeah, they all become art props and gadgets. And you're gonna do that. Agitate quite a little bit for like a minute. Okay, that's it. And then, boom, it goes into the second bucket with the cold water, only cold water, okay? Cat water is fine. Now, I'm just gonna make sure my hand doesn't have any dye pigment before I start to pick this fabric. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that, yeah? Look at the color. Yeah. Ah. Using the black background really make that piece pop. And now this is like watching me doing laundry a little bit. <laughs> so what I'm doing, this is an actual client piece. So I have to make sure that the wax is gone completely. 
yeah, the wax is removed, or even the pencil outline. Because I start with the pencil outline before the wax, you see. So now I have to make sure that that wax outline is also, I mean, the pencil line that I did is also clean. There you go, ladies. And this is how to knit traditional bucket piece is done. It is a process. We begin with the design, and then you go on to the waxing process, which is, I know, skill, skill label, labor to get the wax done. And then we collaborate together where you enjoy the painting, you know, and, and, and relax, enjoy the therapeutic value of creating something that hand painted by you, express yourself with colors, you know, experiment, relax, and then uh, let it dry. And then it goes to another process of chemical reaction that need to happen for the dye that you add on to bond to the fabric, to the fiber. And it's it to dry. And then it got to the last stage of removing the wax, iron or boiling water. And then you get to enjoy your own hand painted cloth, handkerchief, fabric, scarf. And if you, you know, and, and that is the process of batik. It is, um, how do you say, tedious in the sense that there are many stages of. Um, uh, that involved in creating this tiny piece of fabric. You know, it's only 11 by 11 handkerchief, but the amount of hours that, you know, you put into it to create one, if by the time you add up everything, <laughs> is quite ridiculous. <laughs> but I love it. And I love that I can share this with you and allow you to join me, you know, even when we are not in the same state. Yeah, and that's the beauty of of everything. So Will you be sending us these instructions, um, for, like because I think we're all painting, so we're not writing it down. Not. <laughs> you don't pay attention. So I will be paying sharing, attention, just not writing it I down. I will be sharing with Kendall the um the recorded the the recording. Oh, it will right. be on my YouTube, but you are the only person that have access to that link. Yeah, so it's not made public, it's only for your group, and then you can watch it. Everything is there, you know. Or probably go to the last part, <laughs> you know, the last uh, a few minutes. Like, I think I started around what 12 something, 12 32, and then you know, do the, the wax removal part. It's very easy, and I hope that you really take your time to paint your batik piece and enjoy that you know therapeutic values and the me time and just relax i think we needed it you know we needed it just even to not only start the year doing something creative but you know how we connect with ourselves you know when it's just us quiet no distraction that is the best you know i teach airbnb travelers you know, these people plan their day to day just like when we travel you want to do so much so what the best thing is about you know they walk into my home studio space and it's all about relax which is why they start the vacation to begin with you know sometimes you 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 go to a place and you want to relax but you end up running around like you need another vacation so uh, it's wonderful that we can spend this, you know, afternoon together and I have fun with all of you. <laughs> okay, so. Um, the ironing or, okay, so this, the, what I would recommend is, depending on what you like, I think if you like the piece to remain vibrant, huh? uh, you don't want the color to lose, let's say one shade, for example, go with the ironing method because I will tell you when you iron, yeah, the heat set the color to be to pop a little bit more. But then when you uh, boil the piece out of the fabric, this is still wet. But if I were to iron this piece, the blue shades here tend to get very subtle and softer than what you see when it's wet. Okay? So um, if you like fabric, you know, as a keepsake or whatever from the memories, uh, I like washable because I love how cotton feels to touch. You know, for me, when I touch a, a, a temp 
the temporary piece like this. Oh, I, I, I think I, my Zoom session, I got kicked out from my laptop. I think we're still connected here. Mm -hmm. um, Jonathan, can I come back here to my screen here? I'm not seeing it, but you can. I know, I know. So Jonathan's going to help me fix something on my laptop. So the, my recommendation is really, you know, based on your preference, how you like things. If you want the color to stay vibrant, you go to contemporary method, then the color will not change in you. If anything, you'll be surprised how some of the color gets even brighter. Okay. And then and if you like uh, to have a fabric that you can keep, you know, I wear my fabric, <laughs> like say if I travel, you know, I use them to tie my hair, I use them, you know, to accessorize, I hide my money in it, <laughs> nobody knows it, and you know, it depends on how you connect with, you know, fabric, but the feel of a finished um, traditional batik piece is so good to touch, you know, the more you use it, the more you wash it, that fabric gets so soft. And I, I born with that kind of fabric because the minute I was born, the very minute I was born, the first fabric that touched my skin is batik. That's what my mom used, you know, to, 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 to wrap me up. And I think that's how I connect with batik and also material cotton in such a manner, you know. So I only work with cotton because of that. I love it. Ah, Valencia practicing in Malay with me. Sama-sama. Yeah. Uh, terima kasih is thank you. And in Malay, I had a, a blast with all of you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I learned a lot. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Great. Uh, Kendall, Kendall uh, said that we should all hold up our piece and take a group photo. So um, Jonathan, if you can help take a screenshot for me as well. That will be fantastic. So, is everybody ready? Well, I didn't finish mine, but I can hold up uh, this piece here that I use for as an example. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think Shweta is still working and uh, finishing. Uh, if you use a background- Oh, yours is you so bright. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, uh, Dania. So, one more thing. One more thing. If you're creating a traditional batik, saturate the color a little bit. And this is why you are seeing my client piece is so much brighter. Yeah, also because yeah, I, I, I advise them to saturate the color a little bit so the finished product will become how they envision it, where the color does not get too light. All right, one more shot. Sweeta, candle. I think, uh, huh? no more. yes, everybody's smile. Everybody's oh, so pretty. Mind. Wow. Yay. Hey, Batik. <laughs> awesome. Good job, Kendo. Noel, I love the shade. Noel's color is really good. I love it. The shading is amazing. So we definitely have yeah. a few blending queen today. <laughs> no yeah, one, thank you so much. It's amazing. really creative. Uh, awesome, very, you know? uh, very relaxing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. Yay. I, I love it. It's really nice. Well, it's Wednesday, but when it feels like the weekend, I think we have a successful weekend, successful event. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. It's Tuesday. Yes. So thank you, Kendall, for organizing. Thank and thank you so much, everyone. Have a thank wonderful, you. wonderful week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.